this is Lonnie Jones. Uh, this is an updated video on how to make the uh, 550 paracord man. Uh, this is my original design. Um, these guys are made out of 12 foot of paracord. Of course, you can use uh, cords that come off your blinds from your house. Uh, you can use a smaller cord, which is pretty difficult to do. And then depending on the, the thickness of your cord, you'll get a little difference in the characteristic of the little man. This guy's kind of husky. This guy's kind of lean built. Uh, seems to be the most popular version to make these guys is to make out a 550 cord. Uh, today, I'm going to make this guy with a few modifications. I'm going to shorten his arms a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to make him out of two colors. The one that you're watching me make today is for a friend who happens to be an Auburn fan. So you start out with two six-foot pieces of 550 cord. And you take the first one and you tie a monkey's fist knot in the center of the cord. Now that can be interesting to do because you wrap this three times, wrap it three times, tuck it three times, and then you've got to go back and rewrap and pull to make sure that these ends come out almost even. Uh, if you'll start out with six and a half foot of cord and get uh, your monkey's fist not tied and just cut that off, if you're not making a lot of these, not worried about wasting a lot of cord, you can do that. Uh, I don't make my monkey's fist knots uh, perfect anymore. I find that if I leave them a little odd in the design, uh, maybe just two strands on one side or maybe pinch them together, uh, they end up making not a perfectly round head, but they end up making a, a head that seems to have a, a few more little human characteristics. The perfectly symmetrical monkey's fist uh, seem to uh, just, uh, they just look odd to me. I don't like the heads to be perfectly round. Once you get the head piece made, and of course the center part and his arms are going to be blue, then I'm going to go to the second piece of cord and uh, again this is a six foot piece of cord you want to find the ends hold them together pull through and now you found the center part of your cord i pinch that lay it across my palm and usually go about a finger past my palm pull those apart roll to the inside once and then twice the left side goes into the right side and then reach through those bites and grab those loops and pull them out. Now what this makes is a Spanish bowline. And so if that's a little fast on the tutorial, uh, go ahead and Google how to make a Spanish bowline and uh, you pull those, they are adjustable. This side will pull and make this side longer, this shorter. Now, when you first tie that Spanish bowline, it always seems that these two middle strands are crossed. I uncross those strands, and I check my arms to make sure they're the same length, make sure that they're you know, pretty close to the same. And then I'm going to open this up, take one strand of the headpiece, slide it through there, I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing with the other strand for the headpiece. Uh, I've speeded up the process a little bit and pre-did one so that you've got the Spanish bowline with that blue coming through, flipped over, and that blue is coming through. Now, I created this little holder uh, so that I could tie them a little faster. I'm going to adjust it to my holder pull the orange out of the way the blue is the center or the pieces coming out of the head is always used for the center of the body and I'm going to tighten that down a little bit so it's just a little easier to work with it won't stay there long but uh, do that then we're going to tie that cobra braid so you bend the right side to the left go under over out the bite and tighten it up and then you do the opposite. And I usually put about four of these down through the body. And the original tutorial, I ask everybody to either make yours with three or five so that the integrity of my original design would, would be maintained. I don't think that's a big deal anymore. 
you're making little men, just make them like you like them. So I get four pairs of those knots, one, two, three, four, and it's time to start working on making his legs. So you free the legs up. Take them to the top of the, and, and you can tie these from a door frame or you can uh, suspend them from uh, a carabiner. You don't have to have one of these little things to, I made them a lot without just making them without anything to hold them. Uh, this just makes them a little faster, a little quicker to do using this little uh, pattern holder. Now that I've got it that way, I like to turn them over. They're a little easier to work with. And I'm gonna take the orange strand, and I'm gonna make a series of clove hitches, not clove hitches, a series of girth hitches. And you'll notice that these little hitches uh, are, are look just like a, a girth hitch, but uh, I'm gonna use one piece of rope and I'm gonna do it in a single strand. So I'm gonna go over, under, and back through. And then we go under, over, and back through. And that's one knot or one pair and I find that either six or seven works on each leg to make them have the proper proportions for a, a little 550 guy and so we'll run a few of those the hardest thing I found about making these while filming yourself with an iPhone is staying on camera and so I'm trying to be careful to stay centered and make sure I don't obscure anything with my hands or get off the film there. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do two more. And when I say two more, I mean two more pairs. first started making these, one of the big problems I would, ran into was that uh, if I didn't have a pattern or I wasn't using a, a jig of some type to hold them in place, the legs could come out longer than they needed to be and I'd run out of strings for the arms or I'd have too much strings for the arms or the arms would be too long. And so I started using something that would kind of make them uniform and that has help me be a lot more efficient in, in making them. Uh, also, I d came up with kind of a little shortcut to make sure my legs were the proper length every time. So it really doesn't matter how, how much string you have sticking out of this part, that initial uh, bite there coming out. Because once you get as many of these hitch pairs in as you want. One, two, three, four, five, six. I always finish those up. And you'll notice that on this particular guy, they're the, not the same size. And so I'm gonna take a pin and run it through his foot and run that through his foot. Now you'll notice that this strand controls that foot and this strand controls that foot and I'm just going to tighten that up and that's going to give me the proper dimensions so that now my uh, feet are going to be the same size turn my holder the other way I'm gonna insert a, and make sure his foot fits there. If you've got those little fid tools that you like to work with, uh, those are very, very helpful. I made this one without using any special tools other than this pattern holder, uh, because not everybody does this as a, a long-term hobby. You just make one or two or whatever. So 
now we've got his legs secured. Take the two blue strands and finish out that same knot that once you do it on the other side of the, uh, or once you do a second pass, it's, it becomes then what they call a cobra braid, I believe. Under, over, over, under. Under, over, over, under. And some people don't like a, a, a two-color design. Um, like I say, I made this for a guy that's an Auburn fan, so he wanted the orange and the blue. And once you get that done, I'm gonna flip him over. And then I wanna make sure my arms are the same length. That's pretty close. I may have to adjust that just a little bit. Uh, don't know that I can adjust it off camera. That you have to kind of pull tight to do that. slide that time and then I go over here and just make a little finishing knot and you can do two of those you can uh, do a figure eight it kind of depends on how much string you have on the top side of that thing uh, as to how, how large you make his the loops for his hands you don't really have to make loops for his hands you can tie the uh, the series of half hitches and making those girth hitches and go all the way to the end of the string if you want to. I like to make a little cuff uh, with a knot and that kind of keeps me in proportion to everything. And then we're gonna go back into that series of, uh, of pairs of hitches. This one, normally we do three and a half to four on each arm. These arms may be a little long And it kind of depends on, you know, if you want his armor to be long or short. Or... That's where the individual design comes in for everybody. Yeah, see, that's going to fit with four. I'm not going to have very much wasted cord today. Roll that off of his cuff. Might have to get a pair of pliers to pull that as tight as I want it. snug that down with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and I might do that uh, before I burn the edges off or whatever but that's essentially your, your little guy is complete um, you can take a, a lighter cut that and burn it cut that and burn it I have a, a rope burner that uh, will sear the ends off and then melt them and so I seal those up pretty good to make sure that they uh, don't unravel and then they're ready to go on your backpack or your keychain or whatever. I uh, hope this is useful and you enjoy making these little guys. If you don't want to make one, send me an email, lonjones at bellsouth.net, and uh, I'll make one for you. Uh, depending on the time of year, I might have a fast turnaround. <laughs> I might not, but I uh, hope you've enjoyed making this. These are the 550 guys. They have their own Facebook page, uh, 550 guys on Facebook, and uh, enjoy making little men.